Singapore's Home Affairs Minister says places of worship should raise their alertness levels to guard against potential security threats. However, Keishan Mugam cautions against turning them into fortresses. The minister was speaking during a visit to the Yusuf Ishak Mosque, one of the potential targets for a terror attack. A show of solidarity as Christian leaders paid a visit to this mosque. This meeting was held a day after authorities revealed a chilling plan by a 16-year-old Protestant Christian. He planned to attack this mosque as well as another about four kilometers away. And while places of worship are urged to watch out for security threats, authorities say there's no need to amp up measures just yet, as there are plans in place to respond swiftly to crisis. If we started turning places of worship into uh, fortresses, how welcoming is that going to be? And is it really going to be effective anyway? I think we have to have a sense of uh, balance here. Places of worship are meant to be open. They are meant to be open for people to walk in and feel comfortable. So I would be careful about uh, going in that direction. Mr. Shanmugam revealed that since 2015, 53 people have been detained or issued with restriction orders under the Internal Security Act. But to truly protect Singapore against extremism, everyone needs to come to the table in friendship and solidarity and work to reach out to the young. This is indeed a wake-up call for us as a community, not just the Christian community, but together as a nation, how we can help our young people uh, and guide them and mentor them in the right way. And all, all, all of us know that the accessibility to the media has a very damaging influence. And so the onus is on us. Now, as a community that has often needed to explain itself and what Islam truly represents, we deeply empathize with your shock and anguish that someone who professes the Christian faith seeks to do the very thing that would desecrate it. So we have no doubts uh, that Christianity, through the teachings of Jesus, um, the Church Fathers and the Bible, like Islam, through the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, preach love in place of hate. The youth had planned to attack nearby Ashafa'a Mosque first, then Yusuf Ishak Mosque. He also planned these attacks to take place on March the 15th, the second anniversary of the Christchurch shootings. Mr Shanmugam says that the teenager has been detained without trial and won't appear in open court. He adds that there's a risk that the 16-year-old might say things during a trial that would deepen religious divides. It would also allow for the argument that the boy did not carry out the attacks that he planned. If you went through the criminal process and the question is, what has he actually done? And then it will be argued that, well, he hasn't done anything. And uh, in many countries, that's part of the issue. Then you've got to wait for them to do something. Often that's too late. We have taken a different route from many countries in using the Internal Security Act for these sorts of uh, areas. And I think if you look at the record over the last 50 plus years, I think our path, you can see where we are today in terms of racial harmony, in terms of religious harmony, and you compare it against the record of any other country. So it's not the theory, it's a practice. However, Mr. Shanmugam says that the boy will have access to legal representation. He will get a hearing within the rubric of the uh, Internal Security Act, and he will have a lawyer, and uh, his position will be put across. His parents are fully involved. Mr. Shanmugam adds that there is considerable hope that the boy can turn over a new leaf, and his age will be a factor in designing his rehabilitation program. Authorities say that the 16-year-old was fascinated with violent materials, but his parents weren't aware of it. A psychologist thinks that it will help if there are frequent conversations to find out how youths view certain topics, even if it's seemingly harmless content like movies. I might sit down with them and, and just ask them, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, hear what they have to say about it, right? Um, sure, it might lead to just a, a fun conversation, 
but it can also you know be quite uh, illuminating if let's say there was any very specific beliefs that might have a role, uh, you know, arisen as a result. The Education Ministry says that school counsellors have been attending workshops on terrorism and radicalisation since 2016. It added that schools work closely with the Home Affairs Ministry to monitor and counsel students suspected to be radicalised.